Wonderful good day to the company update on Oceana Gold at Commodity TV. Ladies and gentlemen, Oceana Gold Corporation announced that its wholly owned subsidiary, the Oceana Gold Philippines, shortly called OGPI, has filed a registration statement and draft preliminary prospectus with the Philippine Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, and a listing application with the Philippine Stock Exchange, the PSE. In relation to the proposed initial public offering of 20% of the outstanding common shares of OGPI. OGPI holds the company's interest in the DDPO mine and pursuant to the terms of the Renewed Financial or Technical Assistance Agreement, the FTAA, is required to list its common shares on the PSE. The offering is a secondary offering of common shares with the proceeds to be received by a wholly owned subsidiary of Oceana Gold. They also provided an update on the recently completed DDPO underground optimization work. The year-end 2023 mineral reserves and resources is estimated for DDPO and recent exploration and resource conversion of the results. The DPO has a lot of potential and long mine life for the future and has a good and low cost structure. The underground optimization work assessed the potential for increased underground mining rates as well as potential resource extensions below the current reserve limit of panel 2. Preliminary findings included the potential to increase total underground material movement to approximately 2.5 million tons per annum from current 1.75 million tons per annum, displacing lower grade stockpile ore and thereby increasing the overall feed grade to the mill. The potential to increase mill throughput from the current 4 million tons per annum to the already permitted 4.3 million tons per annum to maximize the benefit of processing the larger volume of higher grade underground ore. There is also great potential to extend mine life and increase gold and copper production through further resource conversion drilling and extension drilling in panels 3 and 4 and below. The estimated additional life of mine growth capital is between 100 million and 130 million US dollars for additional mine development, expansion of the mobile equipment fleet, paste fill, plant upgrade, dewatering and ventilation. This should lead to a strong return on this growth capital through increased gold and copper production and extended mine life. The year-over-year 80,000 ounces decrease in reserves was due to 2023 mining depletion, partially offset by conversion of underground resources. The total open pit stockpiles at Didvir at Didipium are comprised of proven mineral reserves of 12.7 million tons at 0.38 grams gold per ton and 0.35% copper with an additional stockpile of 5.3 million tons at 0.18 grams gold per ton and 0.15% copper. The mineral reserves defined by mine design are based upon metal prices of only $1,500 for gold per ounce, $3 per pound copper and $17 per ounce of silver, very conservative. Oceana Gold has a guidance of 460 to 480,000 ounces gold plus 12 to 14,000 tons copper for 2023. The cash cost shall be at 850 to 950 dollars per ounce and the AIC at 1550 to 1650 dollars per ounce. We see here room for improvement and with the DPO, but also Hayland New Zealand mines, we think the company is well set up for the coming rise in gold and copper prices. The pointed figure chart looks very interesting as every low is higher than the last one. A reverse in the down formation with an upward move is very likely. Short term is 3 Canadian dollars 25 a first price target then 3.75 Canadian dollars. Longer term with a break of the 425 and the, and the 475 level we see then 9.5 Canadian dollars as a price target. You find all information also on our Commodity TV app in German and English, plus all about commodities. We are happy for a like, but more important, subscribe to our TV channels. Please note the following disclaimer. The shares discussed are part of the SRC Mining Special Situation Certificate and I'm a shareholder in the company. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.